Welcome to the second lesson. In this lesson we will modify the Hello World dial plan by adding more extensions, then we'll add the dial building block to call specified number, and last we'll add a voicemail. The first thing we'll do is to open the dial plan we created in the first lesson. We are going to start adding some logic to the dial plan so that it will perform different actions based on input from the user. To do this, we're going to need to introduce a few more building blocks. One of the most important keys to building interactive dial plan is the background building block. Like playback it plays recorded sound file, and unlike playback, when the caller presses a key or series of keys, it interrupts the playback and goes to the extension that corresponds with the pressed keys. We are going to change the playback with the background. First I will delete the playback block, and then I'll add background, connect it with the previous block and double click it to open the properties dialog. Here we have many options to modify behavior of this block, but for the purpose of this lesson we'll just type in the sound file we want to be played. The most common use of the background block is to create voice menus, often called auto attendants or phone trees. Many companies use voice menus to direct callers to the proper extensions, thus relieving their receptionists from having to answer every single call. We also want asterisk to wait for input after the sound prompt has finished playing, so we will add wait extension building block. The wait extension block waits for the caller to enter DTMF digits and is usually called directly after the background block. Let's instruct asterisk to wait 10 more seconds after the sound prompt has finished playing. You can also play music on hold. Both background and wait extension allow the caller to enter digits. Asterisk then attempts to find an extension in the current context that matches the digits the caller entered. If Asterisk finds an unambiguous match, it will send the call to that extension. Let's demonstrate this by adding a few more blocks. We will create a simple voice menu with three branches and will read entered digits back to the caller. If the user enters one, the call will go through this branch and we will instruct Asterisk to read entered digit. We'll use say block for this purpose. And we will do the same if the user enters 2, and if the user enters 3. In every branch asterisk will read enter digit back to the caller. And let us now validate the dialed plan. All is fine, and we can now do the deploy. What if user enters some other digit? For example what if user entered digit 5? Asterisk will not match it with any existing extension and will not give you what you expect. That's why we need to handle scenario when user enters some unexpected value. For this purpose we'll use special extension that will handle unexpected inputs. First, we need an extension for invalid entry. When a caller presses an invalid entry, for example press 5, the call is sent to the I extension. I stands for invalid. We'll handle the scenario by playing message back to the user informing him that he entered invalid value and then return the caller back to the main menu. Second, we need an extension to handle situations when the caller doesn't give input in time. In that case the calls will be sent to the T extension. T stands for timeout. Using the I extension, meaning invalid extension, and T meaning timeout, extensions makes our dial plan a little more robust and user friendly. However this dial plan is still quite limited because outside callers have no way of connecting to a live person. To connect caller to the live person we'll need to learn about another building block called dial block. One of the asterisk's most powerful features is its ability to connect different callers to each other. 
This is especially useful when callers are using different methods of communication. For example, one caller might be communicating over the traditional analog telephone network, while the other might be sitting in an office halfway around the world and speaking on an IP telephone. Luckily, Asterisk takes most of the hard work out of connecting and translating between disparate networks. All you have to do is learn how to use the dial building block. For the purpose of this lesson we will add one more extension, 100 extension, that will instruct Asterisk to dial SIP channel 100. In other words, the SIP phone at 100 extension will ring when the caller enters 100 at the voice menu. We can also dial multiple extensions at the same time, for example we can dial SIP 100, SIP 200 and SIP 300 simultaneously, an asterisk will bridge the inbound call with whichever destination channel answers the call first. Dial block is very powerful. It has so many functionalities you can use to accommodate its behavior to your particular needs. And you have integrated help page. Just click on the help button, and you will get a detailed description of each and every dial block functionality. For the purpose of this lesson we will just call extension SIP 100. If the dial block cannot contact the destination, the call flow will continue at one of the output ports. There are several output ports at the dial building block. Unavailable, congestion, no answer, busy, etc. And you can connect to these ports to handle these specific situations. For the purpose of this demo we will handle unavailable, no answer and busy situation. In that case we will instruct asterisk to record a voicemail message. For this purpose we will use the voicemail building block that will send the caller to the specified mailbox, so that the caller can leave a message. And once the caller leaves the message we will hang up the call. That's it. We have created simple dial plan that has basic voice menu, that dials 100 extension, handles invalid and timeout scenarios and leaves voicemails in case the dialed extension is unavailable. Now we will check the dial plan against errors. All is fine, and we are ready to proceed and deploy. Before deploying the dial plan at your asterisk server let us check if you have the asterisk server configured properly for this example. First, we expect that you have successfully installed the asterisk PBX, and that you have configured inbound lines. In other words we expect that you can call your asterisk PBX successfully. Second, we are calling SIP100 extension which we expect you have configured in your SIP.conf file. The configuration for the SIP extension should be something like this. Please add these lines to your SIP.conf file unless you already have it. And third, we expect that the voicemail box is created in the voicemail.conf file. Here is the definition of the voicemail box, and the exact line you should add to your voicemail.conf file in order to create the voicemail box required in this example. Now that we ensure you have all we need, you can deploy the dial plan directly to the remote asterisk server using integrated SSH client. And test the dial plan by calling your asterisk PBX. Here is how the generated dial plan looks like. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Full functional free of charge trial version of visual dial plan for asterisk can be downloaded from our website www.upstill.com